Hey guys, how are you today? We are here with another video for our joy of sharing and I'm going to just bring, uh, bring you my some of my favorite quick watercolor tips. Uh, and you're thinking, what? I don't do watercolor. <laughs> um, that's okay. These work with any water soluble material for the most part. So I just want you guys to play an experiment with your art supplies and your mediums. And this, if you follow me on social media, you've seen this before. This is my eyeball journal that I've been making. Um, I don't know why my muse is screaming at me right now to paint eyeballs. I have no idea. And she's already telling me, when you're done with the eyeballs, I want you to do lips. I don't know what the deal is, but anyway. <laughs> so I have done these uh, mainly in watercolor to start. And then I do the highlights in white gel pen. Then I am inspired by the artist Debbie Weir, who I've spoken about on the channel before, to do sort of a doodly eyeball and um, start with again with watercolor, but then add pen marks and um, doodles to the eyeball to make it something really interesting. And these are actual people's eyeballs; they're not compilations. Different people that I actually know. Um, you'd be surprised how different they can be. So we're actually going to do another eyeball. And I'm going to just show you something really quick. I need my phone. Ugh, okay. Oh, God. We'll do my eyeball. So the first thing I do on my phone, I use the, I paint from the photos on my phone, but the first thing I do is turn off the auto lock, the go, thing that makes your phone go to sleep. Every phone is different, but if you have an iPhone, go to settings. Go to display and brightness and it'll be set to 30 seconds usually. Uh, click it to never. <laughs> then go out and go into your camera roll. Find the photo that you want to paint. In my case, I got to go to my eyeball album. Yes, I have an eyeball album. <laughs> and I'll find my eyeball bags and all. <laughs> there it is. All right, so the first thing I always do is trace the, fo tra trace the eye. Now, if you're not comfortable with that, Print out the eye and put the carbon paper between the eye and your page and then uh, just um, trace over the picture and that'll leave the impression of the eye on your page. You can print the picture too and rub the back of the picture with um, charcoal or with a water soluble pencil or crayon and then trace, lay it rubbing side down and then trace over it and to leave the impression on your page. I'm going to just sketch it. It's not about being perfect and we'll see how far I get. This is my, I really kind of am not crazy about drawing my eye. I've done it before, my face before, and I usually, doesn't usually thrill me. <laughs> so I always, I start out the same way every time. I usually leave some light pencil sketches. In this case, we're going to like draw my bags in. <laughs> oh boy. My eyebrow is not in the picture, but I'm going to pencil it in. If Normally, though, if their eyebrow is not in the picture, I don't put it in there. And then... Just like that. All right, so we're going to get our brushes wet. We've got our, our water colors off to the side here. You can use any brand. If you do have them, it doesn't matter the brand. This is just a spray bottle with some water. This helps me get my paint wet. Any cheap spray bottle. Okay. I'm going to grab just a medium sized round brush. This is a Utrecht round number 8, 6150-R. Utrecht is a company owned by Dick Blick. Um, I am going to mix up a quick um, flesh sort of tone with what's on my palette, and I'm gonna add some like Van Dyke Brown over here to these orangey colors. So the first thing you wanna do is you wanna start off light. With watercolor, my first tip to you is start off light and work your way darker. When you're working with um, acrylic, you can start off in either way, it doesn't matter, and if you get something in the wrong place, you just let it dry and then go back over it later. Um, with watercolor, you, you can't take it back normally. So I <coughs> will put just a little color in the shadow where I know that's going to be because I wasn't sure of the color. And then I will just add water, no paint. 
Um, and that was okay. That was a little dark, but that was okay where it landed because there are shadows of my on my eyeball in the picture in those spaces. Now I'm just adding water. I'm blending it out. I don't mind the splotchy edges, but I don't want any harsh lines. So I'm just rubbing the paintbrush around on the paper, moving the little bit of pigment that I had there around until I get it the way I want. Now while that's still wet, I know that's a little dark, right? So I'm going to go in to those places on the photo where it says to me that it's in shadow, and I'm going to add some more of this. While it's wet, watercolor is always going to follow the water. Always. It's simple that way. I'm going to add a little bit of this darkness to the eyebrow. I do have pretty dark eyebrows, so at least for the moment. <laughs> they are turning gray, but okay. I'm going to do the same thing up here where I'm just going to blur the underneath line a bit. I have bags under my eyes. Thank you, Dad. Thank you, Grandpa. <laughs> so. Um, and I was tired the day I took this picture, which was is okay because I really, one of the things about doing artwork from photos like this is I really want all the different um, nuances that are in each fo person's photo. Now maybe you're watching this and you're thinking, okay, I do not paint at all. <laughs> That's okay. What about doing a collection of work in collage of just eyeballs? or just lips or whatever, maybe a, just a particular flower or tree. You could do that, why can't you? That would be fun too. I'm gonna take some brown, now I have dark brown eyes, so I'm gonna start with uh, uh, raw umber violet. Let's see, which should be this one. Yeah. And I'm gonna mix just a little bit of orange into it. That put again, right? We said, what did we say? Start lighter, work your way darker. Put a little bit of pigment and then add a lot of water. If you want to have a texture in the paint, you want it sort of be blotchy um, or grainy, put some salt in the paint while it's wet. Let it dry naturally and when you come back, brush the salt off into a garbage can. It's going to leave an interesting texture onto your work. You also can do that with um, plastic wrap. So while the paint again is wet, you can scrunch up some plastic wrap, push it down into the wet uh, paint and let it dry naturally and it will leave an interesting uh, mark into the paint. It's a little bit darker of a brown. Generally, your eyes are darker around the outer edge of the iris and lighter towards the center. Um, if you're doing your own eye, get a magnifying mirror, like a makeup mirror if you have one, or take have somebody take a super close-up photo. Now, what if you go in with a pin, you're like, okay, wow, that's way too dark. This is a Mr. Clean Magic Eraser, or at least a piece of one. While that's wet, take your eraser and do this. It won't pick up all of the paint, but look how much it did pick up. Um, and different pigments will stain more quickly than others. Yeah, some of that depends on the quality of the paint you're working with, but generally you can take some of it back with the magic eraser and it, it needs to be wet. So you can't do it when it's already started to dry. So if I do this, look how much it picked up. And then I'm just kind of turning it to a cleaner corner and it's picked up a lot of paint. It's also left an interesting um, texture into the paint. So Mr. Clean Magic Eraser works really well. Um, the other thing, so I'm gonna let that dry for a little bit before I add more layers because right now the paint's just gonna keep mixing together and get something muddy rather than layers of interesting colors on top of each other. So now what I would do is I would go back and mix up a little bit darker color darker flesh tone color, and I'd go back to work on one of the parts that's already dry.
and we'll let that iris part um, dry a little bit. Just let it be. Now again, so just put a little bit of the color on and then blend it out with just plain water. Most of us here that are watching are mixed media artists. So what does that mean? That means we're not gonna restrict ourselves to just watercolor. So if you do something like this and you realize, something I do quite frequently, to be honest, is forget to leave my white spaces. Go back with a gel pen. Let the paint, let the watercolor paint dry and go back and add them back in with a white gel pen. That works just great. Trust me, I've done it a lot of times. Okay, now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go in with some pink. Right here. The tear duct, right? And then you also have a little bit back here. Sometimes there's a little uh, rim of redness around the eye. Add a little bit of the color. Go in and add some water. If you get too much pink, we have our eraser. Look what that did. That made that almost just about perfect. Not too light, not too dark. Took just enough away. Okay, I'm also gonna use the pigment that's on the page to add a shadow over the eye because there would be a shadow from my eyelid, which is in the photo. Okay. I need to make that iris, the colored part of your eye, a lot darker. I have pretty dark eyes. See what's happened right here? The paint has started to bleed. We've got our Mr. Clean Magic Eraser handy. It's my favorite painting tool. So the other thing I'm finding is I'm distracted because the um, pupil is still uh, white. So we are gonna paint it black. We're gonna, again, we're gonna let that center part dry a bit. Okay, blending, blending, adding our colors, blending the shadows. Lifting paint when we get too much in the wrong place. <sighs> like there. See what I did? But look, all done. All taken care of. So just keep working at it. At some point, usually, I have to let it dry because usually I 
um, am too big of a hurry and I just want to, you know, have it look a certain way. Some watercolor pigments are more staining than others, so if you get too much of something in the wrong place, you can always take it back. Again, you can take some of it back with your um, just plain wet brush or the Mr. Clean Magic Eraser, but you may not be able to take it all back. So you do want to be a little more cautious. I find it a challenge, but that's not good. It doesn't have to look any better than that. I will come in here and I'm going to do this because this is too white down here. And I'm going to do the same thing up here. And we're going to dry that and I'll be right now back. Now comes the fun part because remember what I said about us being mixed media artists? Okay, so here's another quick quick tip about watercolor. When you're playing with watercolor especially, but at any time when you're working with watercolor or any other paint, you don't have to stick to, to, to traditional methods. Uh, for instance, I didn't leave any white space. Where's the reflection in my eye? So I'm gonna put it in with a white gel pen. There are some little reflections down here on the bottom. Um, there's light, a lightish spot up here. You can also, with gel pen while it's wet, take your damp watercolor brush and just move it out a little bit so the line is not that harsh. There are some like white spots here and here. And then I can take my black big pen so just have fun with it that's the main the main lesson here is just have fun with it do something interesting unique it may not always work out you don't have to be like me and show it on YouTube um, but have fun with it and there are lots of like painting shortcuts like this and um, we're going to be showing you lots of them this month over on Art Joy of Sharing. So I um, and giving you quick tips and helping you all out. Um, I would love to see what you can do. And is this the best eyeball I've ever dri writ uh, driven, <laughs> drawn? No, but that's not the point. So what I do. <laughs> um, okay, so I've got some cold press watercolor paper. I've got some of my watercolor paints. You can use any water soluble. Um, materials for this. It should work just as well with water soluble ink. Um, maybe some of your crayons, I'm not sure about that. Definitely paint whatever brand that you have. I'm going to show you in fairly dark colors so that you can really see what I'm talking about. So I'm going to start off always by getting my brush wet. Don't start with a dry brush. Always get it wet in your water and then just tap it off on a rag. I'm going to go over here to my palette and I'm going to pick up this dark sort of black purpley color which I think might be Payne's Gray mixed with a few other things and that's uh, not enough water that's not very wet so let's grab some more water so we can reactivate that pigment a bit there we go again just for the purposes of this demo the color doesn't matter so one of the things you can do with watercolor is put a bunch of pigment down. I'm going to actually grab some more. And then take some table salt, regular table salt. This happens to be coarse, but it could be whatever table salt that you have. This is what I had downstairs. And just drop it into the paint. And you can see already, can you see already? Let's zoom in. Can you see already how that's already starting to pick up some of the paint? It'll leave an interesting texture in your paint. The only thing is that you need to leave it sit here 
and don't touch it, okay? Next thing we're gonna do, we're gonna grab some more pigment over here. Now say you're paint working on a painting or a background and you're like, oh, I don't like that color. So the thing with watercolor, you should always start lighter and work your way darker. You can't always take it back, but sometimes you can take some of it back. One of the quick, easy ways to do it is with a piece of a Mr. Clean Magic Eraser. That's right, a Mr. Clean Magic Eraser. It won't take all of it back, but it will, most of the time, take some of it back. Look. So I always keep a piece of this in my watercolor kit and have usually one around the desk somewhere. Another quick tip. If you want to, again, get some interesting texture in your work, maybe something a little different than the salt. Again, I'm just, I'm using kind of muddy colors because I actually have to clean off the bottom of my palette. So I'm just grabbing what's down there. You can take a piece of plastic wrap. Now I don't have a piece of plastic wrap because we actually don't use it that much in the house. I'm trying to get away from it, but this is a piece of a thin plastic bag. It should work. You want to actually crumple it up. You want it to be wrinkly. Um, but it should be plastic so that it can be pulled off and won't stick to the paper. And then push it down into the paper. Like the salt, you need to let it dry. One more thing. A white crayon. This is a regular children's white crayon. Nothing special. I am going to take this white crayon and I'm going to do this. So the wax in the crayon will protect the paper underneath it from picking up pigment, sort of like expensive masking fluid would, only in this case, it's a lot cheaper. Look at that. When the paint dries, the watercolor paint, you can actually gently wipe that paint off the wax. You don't have to, I usually just leave it. look at that. You also can carefully come in on the, just on the white crayon with your, again, your Mr. Clean Magic Eraser, my favorite art supply, right? How cool is that? Let me zoom out, hang on, I'll be right back. Okay, now to be honest, these are probably not as dry as they should be, but I'm really excited to show you. So this is the plastic wrap. And as you can see, the plastic wrap will push the pigment around and leave an interesting texture in the paint. Again, this isn't actually plastic wrap, this is a piece of a thin plastic bag. It'll work too. Each one will probably give you a little bit different texture, but isn't that cool? And then of course we have the salt. Again, it's not as dry as it should be. It's smeared a little bit, but how cool is that? So simple, easy, quick tools you probably already have lying around your art room and or kitchen somewhere. And if you have kids, you definitely have white crayons. You don't need to get the whole box. You just need a white one. They probably don't need it, so go grab a white one. Um, one of my favorite things to do when I'm out at a restaurant is ask for the kids menu. They usually come with crayons. They don't always have white, but they usually come with crayons. Um, so that's it for this month. Uh, so just some quick watercolor tips that I hope you play with and experiment with and enjoy. Play with your paints, play with your supplies, have a great time. Check out the other people that are sharing quick tips in Art Joy of Sharing. I'll try to leave some of the links in the description below, if not all of them. Uh, there is an Art Joy of Sharing Facebook page, and of course you know they have their own Art Joy of Sharing channel and uh, weekly live broadcasts on Thursdays. So. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to my channel and the others. I, we would all really appreciate that. And above all, go out and have a great time and do something nice for yourself because you deserve it. And I'll see you later. Bye, guys.